here for the pieces of my soul deck challenge and um i'm going to try to kind of structure this um pieces of my soul so these are decks while i am a firm believer that there is no such thing as a soul deck i believe that the decks i've selected here and i may have forgotten one and i could get all anxious about it but i'm not gonna the decks I've selected here are the most special to me um, at this point in time. So I feel like I'm the most connected to them. And um, these are decks that made me go, oh man, if I were to go to a deserted island, I couldn't live without these. And we're going to start with an Oracle deck. And you may think, huh, what's that language? Uh, this is a deck in Dutch. This is a Dutch translation of... Lucy Cavendish's and Jasmine Beckett Griffith's Oracle of Shadows and Light. Now, why did I pick this one? Uh, let me tell you why. Um, this deck kickstarted my divination journey. Um, I had always had a tarot set. Oh, look at that. I love her art so much. I'd always had a tarot set. However, um... I didn't know how to, I, and I knew how to read, and I was always on book. I wasn't off book yet. I was like, I, I would kind of like to perform readings for myself without having to know all this shit. Uh, and then I was in a metaphysical store with a friend, uh, my one of my best friends, Malou. And um, she told me that she was kind of into oracle cards, and I was like, bitch, what? If you're into it, I'm going to get into it as well. And I had seen these before, but I'd always taken myself too seriously and thought they looked a bit too playful for me. However, I did decide to get these because these were the ones I secretly wanted. Um, so I got these and I started doing readings with them and I was like, hey, these readings are kind of accurate, you know? Uh, this is fucking cool. So that's why I got them, and also why I'm never gonna let this deck go ever, ever, ever. I've since acquired the English version of this, uh, but this Dutch version is what started it, and it was this deck that made me go, okay, I, I kind of know how to do readings now with an Oracle deck. Now I'm going to actually study the tarot. So that's what I did. <laughs> I started studying, 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 studying. But this deck, even though it's a pretty run-of-the-mill cookie-cutter oracle card deck, um, I love it. And I do still feel that Lucy Cavendish knows how to write a deck. I think she is fabulous. I think she's stunning, stunning deck author. I think she's really good at what she does. Now, let's see, another deck that I would love to never ever part with that is a piece of my soul is the 1JJ Swiss. Now, I have a fondness for Marseille style decks. Um, I really do. So, um, when Martin of Tarot in the City here on YouTube told me that this was his first deck, I was like, ooh. I, mm, I kind of want to get this, uh, and it's stunning. It does have the fugly brown playbacks, but that's kind of part of the charm. Uh, this is a stunning Marseille style deck. I do love the way the pips look. Um, the art of the pip is something that's very special, that gets underappreciated a lot. And I really love all these ornate Marseille style drawings. Um, I feel like there's lots of directionality here where, you know, the Queen of Cups is looking at the Emperor uh, and the Knight of Cups is looking at the Emperor. If you would draw those consecutively in a reading, which one is she going to choose? I think she's going to go for safety rather than romance, if you get my drift. So, uh, yeah, I really adore this deck. I think it's one of the prettiest Marseille-style decks there is. Um, I 
It's really, really pretty. I adore the pentacle suit in this because it's so vibrant with the yellows. Um, yeah, it's it's really pretty overall. And if you are a, tra a traditional Marseille style reader, you can read with this fine. If you are more of a numerology reader like me, you can read with this fine. Um, but nevertheless, it's a stunning piece of work and I love it. And I will never ever part with it. Um, and <laughs> flipping, flicking through this kind of makes me want to read with Marseille type decks a bit more because I think it's it's stunning. I have a couple of really cool ones in my possession uh, that I really like, so I may just have to uh, get with it. <laughs> so yeah, definitely a piece of my soul. Mm. Another one that I really adore is the Millennium Thoth. And I have spoken about this one on my channel a lot, but I've gained some subscribers since the utmost beginning. This is one of the, one of the first decks that I got, you know, after a while, after I started collecting a little bit and I was kind of like, I need to have this. I don't know anything about the Thoth yet. I, Thoth yet. I didn't have the original Thoth even, and of course, purists are gonna tell me you're crazy for bringing this over the original for considering this a piece of your soul but this really opened up the thoth style reading for me and wanting to know more about it and wanting to learn more about it what i love about this deck is that jamie elfort wrote the guidebook and even though she isn't i know that she's not the biggest thoth Fan. She did do her research. The, the Little White Book, albeit small, is quite comprehensive when it comes to knowledge. So that's really great. I love these Los Scarabeo top lid boxes. I think they're really cute. Um, and there's something about this deck. I think Renata Lechner really outdid herself. Um, I love the Seven of Pentacles. That's one of my favorite depictions of it. Uh, this Two of Pentacles as well. Oh, man. Like, she really did the Thoth illustrations justice. This is, I think, what the Thoth tarot would have looked like if it would have been designed today. If Crowley and Lady Frida Harris would have been alive today, today, this is probably what it would have looked like. And I feel like she kind of took that approach. She also did the Thelema tarot, which I highly enjoy, which is kind of a mixture of Thoth and Rider Waite Smith, but leaning more towards the Rider Waite Smith. And then she also has the Arcanum Tarot, which is strictly Rider Waite Smith. So uh, yeah, I think this is adorable. I mean, look at that moon card. Really good, really pretty deck. Oh, whoops, that was my outlook going off. And now you can all hear that, yay. Really pretty, really good, really interesting. Uh, look at this Princess of Pentacles. Um, yeah, I, I, and, and also these are all decks that are my favorites, but for some reason you forget to use your favorites a lot. And I really want to use this more like such a pretty deck. Once again, the art of the pips. Uh, this is one that I, by the way, that this is one that I kind of feel a little iffy about. I feel like she took too much liberty with this one. Um, because in the original Thoth, the, the Aeon looks way different and, and the story behind it is a bit more interesting. However, um, yeah, I mean, also the hunky, hunkiness factor of this deck really helps a lot. I mean, I really like it. I think it's really cool um, for people that kind of want to get into the Thoth. Uh, also, like a really great stepping stone. Uh, if you want something that's a little bit more modern, but that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. I know that M. M. Moline has some modern iterations of it, but they're kind of expensive. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, the next one's kind of a doozy um, because you should all expect. You could all expect this one. I need to get all the cards out. This is one that I use a lot for readings for other people. Um, I should probably, yeah, um, let's see how this works. Okay, these are all the art cards, yes, bloop, 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 bloop. 
bleep blah bloop yes okay this is the centennial borderless centennial rider weight smith i love this one i love the muted color jones uh, let me tell you all about the Rider Waite Smith. This was the first deck that I saw when me and my mom got a tarot reading and uh, the imagery stood out to me on a very, very much on a soul level. Of course, after working with this extensively while you're learning the tarot, sometimes it can get a little bit... Um, boring after a while, hence the reason why I think a lot of people collect decks. This is a full image, I don't know, has struck a chord with me and has always done so ever since that reading. So there's something really, really special about Pamela Coleman Smith's art. Uh, and I do adore these muted color tones of the Centennial Edition. Um, so yeah, um, I mean, I'm not going to show you the rest because you all, what is pretty cool is that with the Centennial Edition, you get different art cards. And with the Borderless one, you get this one, this one, look at that change in style here, look at that. And you get this one, and I believe they differ across this version, the bordered version, and the tarot in a tin version. So that's pretty cool. Let's see, I need to stick them back into the box in a way where the art cards don't get mixed with the, with the um, non-art cards, with the actual deck. And I'm just going to take my sweet time because this is my channel and I can do what I want. But you know, it would be really edgy and cool of me to say that I would not take a Rider Waite Smith copy with me, but I would. Like, it's a piece of my soul. Um, the next one is maybe a little bit unexpected. It's this, The White Fox Oracle by Sabine Casasus, also known as Zadoras. Uh, this is a really cute little deck that you can read very intuitively if you want to. Um, it just has symbols. It's very simple. It's very cute. It's very kawaii. I give great readings with this. Uh, I've never used it on people because, you know, I'm always kind of scared of the way people react. Look at that bear when you bring such a cute looking deck. Um, but this is magnificently produced. Really, really, really pretty. All symbols that make sense to me. All symbols that bear a lots of meaning um, to me personally that I can really use to string a story together. Look at the avocado. Um, you know, and there is a little guidebook with it. Um, there's even a more extensive one that you can download online. But I really like this a lot. I think it's a stellar deck. Stellar. Uh, you know, sometimes cuteness. Don't let the cute. Don't let the cute taste fool ya. It's a. It's a good deck. Uh, I got number three hundred and seven of five hundred. She hand numbered all of these, y'all. I don't know if they're still available, but. Um, if you're interested in it, it's from Europe, just so you know. If you're interested in it, this is the website. Um, and you can also find her like that on Instagram. It's fabulous, fabulous. Really, really good little pack that really fits with my reading style. Now, the next one I love is the Barbara Walker Tarot. Now, there is some controversy regarding the book, the big book that belongs to this tarot but i'm not gonna talk about that if you're interested in hearing about it just send me a dm on instagram the deck however is very dark very depressing very much my jam um i really like uh the incorporation of different deities from all around the world i really like this art style don't spend your money on an original edition thinking it's going to be bigger than this because it was about the same size. So just get the tin version. Uh, it's cheap. It doesn't have 20,000 languages on it. And uh, it's gorgeous. 
Uh, I love the keywords that were chosen. They make me think. I love the 70s aesthetic. This is my favorite Nine of Pentacles ever. Uh, there's a lot of cool things happening in this deck. A lot of really interesting, really, really interesting uh, things. Uh, and I have never finished that book. You can get a copy of the of the original big book on you know ebook stores for two ninety nine. Don't spend your money buying the original book. It's gonna cost cost you hundreds upon hundreds of dollars. And I don't know, I just really adore all the mythologies, all the interesting concepts behind each card. Uh, I think it's stellar, stellar deck. Very often overlooked because it doesn't have a have an Instagrammable aesthetic. Uh, you know, which you know happens a lot these days. These days, everything that isn't instantly readable and instantly Instagrammable and instantly recognizable is kind of being overlooked, and that's kind of a shame because this deck has something to offer. Uh, let's see, let's bring in another tarot deck, because I have two more tarots, two more oracles, and we're kind of going to switch things up a little bit. So the next one is another deck that offers a lot of symbolism, a lot of layers, comes with a stellar guidebook that's fun to read, and that's the Star Tarot. I don't keep it in its atrocious big box, I keep it in a velvet bag. The cardstock on this is probably the best cardstock Schiffer Red Feather have ever done. Uh, this is the reprint. The original had obnoxious big borders around it. Um, and I'm not one that hates borders. I don't really mind or prefer them. But this is definitely a step up in quality. The art in this is stellar and really comes to life without the borders there. So really stunning uh this is probably one of those decks where i prefer the minor arcana over the major arcana um really colorful really gorgeous really amazing um stellar guidebook um you know this is definitely one of those decks that made me go "Ooh, and i'm interested in tarot again you know um whereas you know some decks made me feel like oh i really hate tarot and i would love to quit it because of this deck that does happen to me sometimes and we're gonna end the little flip through on this magnificent temperance <laughs> gay as hell angel note uh, but yeah this is definitely one sometimes i don't know in america it's probably widely available Schiffer red feather is kind of difficult to get over here in europe sometimes because their distribution game isn't the best however um it's worth the money, definitely. It's, you know, Schiffer Red Feather decks are always a bit bit steeply priced, um, where sometimes that will make me go, is it worth it? And uh, yes, it is worth it, um, at least with the Star Tarot. Next, another Schiffer Red Feather. Oh, I wanted to do Switch Oracle and Tarot up, but I've already unpacked it. Another one that I don't keep in the box because it's atrociously big. Uh, this is the Mary L Tarot. I think this is one of the greatest tarot decks ever made, and it will probably go down in history as such. Um, even though I feel like there's a lot of Mary L bashing going on right now. Um, which is probably because this deck kind of throws you for a loop, loop because you might feel like this is very standard Rider Waite Smith work because everything's illustrated, but this is very much um, a mixture of Golden Dawn, Aleister Crowley, Arthur Edward Waite, um, other esoteric systems and knowledge, numerology, uh, all that kind of stuff. But this fits perfectly with the way I personally read. I read numerologically, um, I, so sometimes with me, um, sometimes, so, and that's the way, that's my, sometimes when people, when I get into a heated PIP versus non-PIP debate, um, sometimes the Rider-Waite-Smith-esque illustrations are limiting to me because 
uh, my card meetings can sometimes differ from um, from the exact way Pamela Coleman Smith portrayed the concept of a card. And this deck, for some reason, it feels like, oops, another Outlook thing, yay. This deck feels like it was made for me. It feels like it was made for me personally. This has everything in it that I want from a deck. Every piece of symbolism, every layer, every mythology, every every fantasy it has it all it has it all like i can't <sighs> this is my favorite deck you guys and it's a mass market have you guys noticed how many indie decks were in this stack so far one <laughs> you know i've been buying this is my favorite king of cups ever this embodies what king of cups means to me um this comes to show it goes to show you that you know all these sparkly pretty indie decks can be really cute sometimes mass market is where it's at look at this three of discs how is that for earthly growth growth within your family home work uh abundance because that's how i read the threes uh that the world look at that stunning uh, this chariot. Ugh. So, uh, yeah, this is still the old edition. I was talking about Obnoxious Borders earlier. I don't mind them that much here. Um, the borders on the Star Tarot were, I believe, almost... Let me put this against the background so you can see. I believe that the borders of the first edition of the Star Tarot were about twice as big as these. Obnoxious. Um, there is a second edition of this out where they have changed some of the art. Uh, I prefer the original edition, even despite the, the gloss and uh, the borders. I prefer the original edition. And this, this is by far my favorite tarot deck that I love to use. I used to only use it on, used to only use it on myself, but I do use it for clients and now as well. Um, so that leaves two Oracle decks, and this is the only indie Oracle deck that I have here. I did show the first edition recently on this channel. Uh, this is the Threads of Fate Oracle, which is one of those aesthetic decks, but that actually offers depth. Uh, it's kind of difficult to show on here due to the lighting, but this is one of those gold foil Oracle decks, kind of sigilly. It's, it is kind of tarot-esque because you do have 22 sort of major arcana-esque cards. Uh, and then you have um, some pretty uh, cool like minor cards that aren't like numbered or anything but do belong to the elements. So, you know, that's interesting. And for each minor card, you get a an animal, a plant, and a crystal for you to work with. So this really showed me what content you can put into an Oracle deck if it's created well. This is one of my favorites. Look at that with draw. So yeah, I'm not going to show these all. Um, the thing with this deck is it's really expensive. Um, and I believe they also stopped doing wholesale. So this is never ever going to be sold. I bought this at House of Form Lab, which is a pretty neat Dutch indie store. But I messaged them asking about the threads of newest thread of threads of fate deck. And I think, I believe she, the owner, Nicole, told me that they were not going to be doing any wholesaling anymore so that means it's a u.s exclusive and i'm not paying 30 dollars worth of shipping costs um however it's it's a great deck it's definitely one of my ultimate favorites another one that is really good really all round uh which is also an indie it looks like it's a mass market deck it's not it's an indie deck by cheryl lee harnish uh return of spirit um, this used to be widely available. The Dutch mass market edition of this is always widely available because a Dutch publisher picked this up for mass market publishing. This is the English version though. This is, um, 
a really interesting deck because I do I give great readings with this. This is Fractal Art. Um, she has other decks that she where she kind of asks you to use it very whoops very intuitively. Um, these have keywords on them though, so these are very much meant to be read in conjunction with the keyword. Um, and I well, what I do with this deck is. Um, I do slam readings, kind of, where I just keep pulling cards until I intuitively sense that the reading is done. Um, I'm, do I want to give you an example right now? I could give you an example of it. But this is, you know, it has fractal art, um, which kind of reminds me of those stoner posters, raver posters from back in the 90s. Uh, you know, with the smileys and the dolphins and shit like that uh, I always wanted those posters my mom never let me get one but I had dreams about that art when I was a kid like that's how much I wanted them and now I have oracle decks filled with them so if I were to do a slam reading for myself whoops we just got a card so mediumship that's the first card that I got it's a jumper so um, apparently spirit is trying to tell me something about mediumship. Mediumship is not something that I really want to get into. However, I have kind of been toying with it because I feel like it is time to open up my intuition even more, though I feel like I should be on more stable ground. So mediumship is gonna <laughs> make me immune to the shifts in The shifts in assistance. Huh. So mediumship is going to make me immune to the shifts in. I think this has, this assistance has to do at work. It's going to, the mediumship is going to make me immune to shifting assistance. And it's going to help me birth new perspectives when it comes to my own gifts. And it's also going to make me feel worthy. And it's going to feel like my prayers have been answered. I have to be wary of staying in, in uh, keeping my integrity intact. But I also need to use it to write more. Write more. Write books. Write poetry. Journal. It's going to help me manifest. But it's going to take some commitment. And also music's going to be part of it. So that's interesting because I am working on a very big musical project at the moment. So interesting. That's, that's kind of how I, how, I do, how I do it. I have to be in a certain frame of mind. Um, but it's interesting that that mediumship card popped up because that has popped up into my mind a lot. So what I will sometimes do is just leave those cards out and you know return to them at a later point but i feel like this is a really special sort of magical deck that i love um so that was the last one guys um i do have a little update on this baby right here the brother to brother oracle that i made unfortunately uh the publisher that i had submitted it to doesn't want to take it into production that is completely fine. I will probably be doing a Kickstarter for this soon. Uh, I think this is definitely my best deck, the best deck that I've made. And this is definitely a piece of my soul in a box. <laughs> Must admit it did hurt a little bit, but they were very cautious. Um, and I feel like this is a really strong, fun product. Uh, that I want people to be able to use and enjoy at a more affordable price. Because if I were to put this up on my playing cards right now, it will cost 50 euros a piece to produce. And that's not even me getting a small cut. That's me getting zero, nothing. So, um, yeah, more on this later. But it is it is happening. It is coming. It's coming because I want it to. And if the Kickstarter doesn't work, I can still put it up there for the people that do want it. But this is definitely a piece of my soul. <laughs> As are my other decks. But this one in particular, I feel like was created in a 
surge of inspiration and I wanted to include it. So those were the pieces of my soul decks, not 10, but 11. Uh -huh. uh, thank you for watching and bye-bye.